Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my Path of Exile 3.25 Righteous Fire Chieftain Edition. Now for people who played the build last league, the builds actually are, are actually are, actually I'd say a little bit stronger um, on the early mid and late game stages but definitely weaker on the let's call it hyper late game so if anyone got to the like adorned version of scaling you're definitely weaker at that stage the reason i say we're a little bit stronger is if anyone who played the build remembered it was maybe a bit squishy against burst damage when he didn't have defiance of destiny we're actually able to incorporate block cap spell block cap and recovery on block which you kind of always want to do in this setup um, so that should make it feel way stronger. So in the background here, you guys can kind of see some footage of my SSF character mapping. That's kind of what you want to go ahead and aim towards, although that's not the pinnacle peak. You can go much faster than that. Okay, so if you guys are new here and you've never followed my build guides before, I want to go ahead and get started with showing you this website here. It's called pox.net. So all you really need to care about for the sake of this video is clicking the copy URL right here. This is going to give you the RF Chieftain path of building. Now, when you go ahead and copy this, all you have to do is import it into POB, but I'm going to show you some cool other features on here. Real fast, uh, if you've never crafted before, there's a crafting tab here. You can click it and go peek all the crafts for RF Chieftain. If you have any questions at all, you can go ahead and click the FAQ. There's over 100 questions. Control F. You can go ahead and look, for example, like maybe you're new to mapping. What do I avoid? Here you go. Also from here, you can also go ahead and look over here. There will be an Act 1 through Act 10 walkthrough, meaning it literally takes you from level 1 all the way at the beginning, holds your hand, goes through the whole campaign. So this has a whole bunch of tips in it. If you are new, this is the number one best resource I can provide you. I still have to make the updated one. I'll be doing that in the coming days. Other than that, there's a written guide you can find located here, a built-in loot filter, and then a bunch of other stuff. All right, well, anyway, though, let's go ahead and get started. So now that you have the copy URL there, you're just going to go ahead and import this into your path of building right here. Now, right before we get started, I want to state there's two different ways you can level this build right now. I'll be doing the classic version of just leveling with rolling magma. That means you need to mule on a second character. It only takes five minutes. You get some bonus extra loot. It's pretty cool. For people who want to try the new melee rework, pretty much every melee skill got buffed in the campaign specifically. So you can go ahead and try taking like kinetic impacts, for example, maybe taking the mastery for more damage. If people want to level that way, I'll be leveling with rolling magma. So we're not going to talk too much about that. Uh, I want to go ahead and talk about a few buffs that were added on our tree. So now we're going to be pathing here. You get actually more elemental res in the campaign, specifically more max Ellie res. So this is really nice. And then you get the new block cluster here for later. Remember, if you are brand new and you've never used this before, I'm going to go ahead and try to make this as simple as possible. So of course, you're going to start and you can kind of see the tree pathing on where you go. However, in the top right here, there's this new feature called loadouts. So loadouts, basically, when you click it, it's going to go ahead and beam everything for you. So, for example, maybe you just finished, uh, you know, level 20 or on level 21. If you click it from here, it's also going to take the items and shift that for you and the skills as well. Furthermore, in the skills tab here, I do have a lot of extra info for people who get stuck and are, who are newer to the game, just kind of don't have all the information yet. So make sure you go ahead and read through here. For people who want to do the caster variant but don't like rolling magma, consider using Holy Flame Totem or using Holy Flame Totem with rolling magma, depending on what you want. This is an early regex we put in the vendor. This basically just makes it so intelligence and movement speed uh, gear highlight. Anyway, going back over to the uh, path of building here, I'm going to go ahead and jump this down to some higher settings. Now, <clears throat> before we continue, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some pros and some cons real fast. So in the patch, we are weaker to physical damage with all the changes to fizz taken as. Um, so this is something we're going to be working on. The POB is a bit tankier than shown here because we did get buffed on life and armor, and I haven't reflected that in the POB. We're much stronger against elemental because endurance charges now give max or additional elemental uh, mitigation instead of res. Uh, we do hit 90 all res block cap with uh, life recovery on our shield on block with endurance charges, so it should feel tankier than last league. Uh, we don't scale as well with Adorn since Adorn overall got nerfed, and we are much tankier in the pre-Defiance of Destiny version, which I don't even have anymore. There's no more DoD in this. Uh, but we're much tankier because of block and recovery. We do have to deal with more map mods, such as monsters steal your charges. Although pretty much every build right now that's incorporating endurance charges has to deal with that. Uh, and then the other one would be the minus block mod. You don't really want to deal with either. Um, one of the pros with this build is you only stack fire res and then later chaos. And I'll get into that in just a minute. 
don't have the best boss damage, uh, but it is an excellent tanky map blaster. So, you know, what it's not good at, it makes up for. Okay, so going on into the path of building, uh, one of the nice ways I could try to sell you on the build, if you're watching the footage originally, uh, the playstyle as you get a little bit more geared is pretty much just shield charging your way through, occasionally throwing your fire trap and using your curse to help your explodes kind of really do the heavy lifting. So if you look over here on the left, you'll notice my fire resistance is 83, my cold is 80, and my lightning is 80. Although if I uncheck this node here, you'll notice they go all the way to negative. And this is the because the Sallow Cleansing Water node makes it so you literally just stack fire res with this build. You don't have to worry about cold. You don't have to worry about lightning. You stack fire res. And this takes me back to an original point here. If I take this loadout and go back here, some of you guys may be asking, when do you start Righteous Fire? And that's actually in Act 2. In Act 2, after you, I believe it's Kill Fidelitis, who's in Chamber of Sins, you can buy the Righteous Fire gem from one of the NPCs back in town. I think it's an Alteration Orb. And you're going to need this Fire Mastery right here. It says regenerate one life per second for each uncapped fire or 1% uncapped fire res. TLDR, 150 fire res equals 150 regen. If you go ahead and look here, you'll notice my life regen is 27. If we just take the drop down to 21 to 40, we go all the way to 600. Now, how might that be possible, you might ask? That's because fire res stacking with the mastery is very strong, along with getting things such as hardy, bonus uh, life regen right here, and other sources. You also want to make sure you're taking the max res nodes so that you are mitigating your own righteous fire damage and also the damage monsters deal to you as well with elemental. Okay, moving on a little bit more in this, we're going to drop down over to, <clears throat> let's go with 61 to 80, actually one before it. Let's go 41 to 60. So in your 41 to 60, you can pretty much see the rest of the pathing here. This is all pretty much the same. One of the big questions I get all the time is why do people take spiritual aid? We're not minion builds. This is because this node gives you efficient damage scaling uh, on the way to it, while also giving you 1% life regen. This minion node means that if it says 10% minion damage, it basically means 10% fire damage. Later on, we can use this to basically get an entry level weapon, but we'll go over that in another video. Okay. Over here, you'll notice now that we are filling out the rest of the tree, but more importantly, the ascendancy. So Ramako Sun's Light is one of our big ways of scaling our damage without having to worry about map mods, essentially. The damage the Chieftain does is always going to look underwhelming on the sheet, and that's primarily because the build doesn't do the most damage, but also because Ramako Sun's Light eliminates so many map modifiers that would normally make it feel like the build does a lot less damage. For example, monsters have bonus elemental res, doesn't matter. Monsters have endurance charges, doesn't matter. Monsters who are possessed by a ghost, giving them bonus Ellie res, doesn't matter. Um, you know, a whole bunch of different elemental res shrines that give Ellie res auras, none of that matters when you're standing still. When you stand still, you trigger everyone has minus 20. So it eliminates all of it and just goes straight to minus 20. So double-edged sword, regular variants of RF can get more single target by stacking, you know, elemental weakness, flammability, scorch, combustion, etc. But this makes you a much better mapper because you can deal with all the different map mods. That's kind of where the build doubles down on being a mapper. And then Hinakora over here is the main reason to play Chieftain. If you saw in the original clip there when I was just shield charging, you'd see explosions. This right here is the explosion. It does all of your heavy lifting when you're clearing. You're pretty much getting enough damage on your Righteous Fire to trigger this so you can just keep on shield charging through. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just minus out of this and go to a lower level character real fast. So character I'm going to go to is actually, I think, going to be in the 21 to 40 range here. So let's just go ahead and boot that up. So right on over here, I did a little SSF run and we're 38. And this character, let me tell you, as the worst gear imaginable. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to Comb Stronghold here. I'm going to go on D&D. &D. You can see, I mean, I'm quite literally using like a white weapon with Crafted Dexterity. I do have a four link, although it's it's white. Uh, my single target is unfortunately a two link, so that's Rolling Magma and Combustion. That doesn't really cut it. But you'll see, even at this low level, the Righteous Fire is still doing enough damage to kill targets, right? It really does become your primary way of leveling. The damage on it won't really fall off until your later maps. That's a primary reason why you want to six link your Righteous Fire first. So later on in the build guide, you're going to go ahead and notice that the Fire Trap goes in the helmet and the RF goes in the body armor. That's because you six link the RF first to get your clear speed. Then you want to go ahead and worry about your 
uh, Elder Helmet with your Fire Trap. Now, as for the leveling again, when you're at this point, you'll notice I'm using flammability now. There is one thing that happens with the build. When we get Ramako Sun's Light, the one that makes it so that mobs have negative 20 fire res, you actually want to switch that to punishment. So here you can see my single target basically doesn't exist, and that's primarily because it's all RF. You know, the little two-link uh, rolling magma is not cutting it at this point. By this stage in the game, I would be using Fire Trap, but I wanted to just show you guys me still leveling with the rolling magma. I'm just showing RF do most of the heavy lifting. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and jump off that. Don't mind the Octopath Traveler background. I love that game. Okay. Also, we got some rain in the background, so sorry about that. Moving on a little bit more, let me go ahead and show you the 41 to 60. So, this is the one... Actually, we pretty much covered most of the stuff. Nothing here is really special at all. You can kind of see everything is pretty bare bone in here uh let's go to 61 through 80. so 61 through 80 is pretty much like your early mapping you just broke into maps slash you're like kind of into yellow maps uh jun also known as betrayal also syndicate is a very large um form of crafting and modifiers like we use a lot of them for the build uh, a lot of builds do so if you see anything with like fire and chaos craft that's from jun you unveil it one time and you're done um, you also have like percent fire damage, fire damage over time multiplier, fire damage and ignite chance, a lot of these. During the campaign, you can opt to level with an offensive shield, so it'd be like percent fire damage or plus one fire gems, percent fire damage being ideal. You can also do wield, um, or you can just use, if you want to be tanky, you're like a pure armor shield. You have some, some flexibility and some variety here. Your amulet is a big source of damage. Uh, amulets, this one doesn't have one right now because it's low level. Amulets can roll percent damage over time multiplier and plus the level of fire and all spell skills. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down one more to the 81 to 90. This is when you'll notice the first unique kind of pops on. And if I open the tree, you can kind of see it expanded here. Um, nothing too special yet. So over on the items, the first pickup is Immortal Flesh. This is usually acquirable for just a chaos or two on League Starts. This thing gives so much life regen. If you look here at 1500, if I drop it, I lose 500. So it's a massive source of your uh, life regen in the early stages. Whoops, a daisy. Let's go ahead and go back to that. Okay, there we go. Very, very nice pickup. Um, over on the skills here, you can see everything is pretty solid. There's nothing special here yet. So we've got currently like Purity of Fire. We've got our Summon Skitterbot. We've got Determination. Not running Malevolence yet. So this is because you want to be more tanky. Um, this is kind of a weird thing right now. We're not a hundred. I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, what the best avenue is to explore physical mitigation. Whether or not we're going to go with a cloak of flame like last league, or we're going to try to get like a thick, glorious plate or something above later. So this is something I'll be experimenting with, and you'll see videos on it pop up. But that's pretty much your options there. Um, the ideal goal is dropping determination for malevolence so you can get more damage. But people who want to stay tankier can do the opposite, right? Moving on to the set here, 90 going block-based. This is where I put a lot of my, my time. This is where I imagine most players are going to, I don't want to say the term plateau, but feel like they completed their build, right? So by this point, you are definitely killing Eater and Exarch, so that's not necessarily a problem at all. I'm also going to close the window real fast because it is pouring all of a sudden. Okay, by the power of editing, I promise that'll be removed. Just kidding, it's not going to. So anyway, focusing on this, this is, like I said, where players are going to be doing tier 16 maps at this stage. Although, <clears throat> actually, no, although. So if you look at the tree, there is a pivot here. The pivot is, you'll notice on the side here, we stop taking the side, and instead we path through the middle here. This is for going block-based. Now, I'm specifically talking about this because it's a transition, and whenever you have a transition in Path of Exile, it can be tricky to understand. So the purpose of the transition is achieving block cap and spell block cap. The reasoning for this is so that when you are tanking a lot of monsters because the build doesn't deal that much damage, you want to go ahead and mitigate as much as they do, well, as much as you can. And a nice way to do that is getting block and spell block. When you pair this with having very high maximum resistance, this shield mod for recover life on block can quite literally shrug off the damage you take, almost making you out heal it. This pairs really well with our life regen, but life regen is not enough to keep you surrounded if you have like 30 monsters attacking, right? So this is where the block base setup comes in. Now, an easy way to do the block base setup is quite literally taking 
the block mastery here for four points. So one, two, three, four. Glancing blows. And then Tempest Shield, which we currently have on in our skills. So if I uncheck Tempest Shield, you'll see I now only have 25 block. That's from my shield. If I check Tempest Shield, I go to 25. Then going back to my tree, I'm going to go ahead and go this left side. You'll notice we're at 41 block and 25 spell block. Then we take 1% spell block per 5. We're at 4133. Then we're going to go ahead and take Glancing Blows. And we're block capped. Just like that. It should be a really clean transition to making your character feel way more tanky in the early stages of the game. And this is kind of how we keep upgrading and pivoting the character. By this point, you can also tackle, I would say, Uber Elder and Maven. Although for Uber Elder, I would recommend a little bit higher damage, maybe closer to like 3 million if you want it to go faster. It is a bit of a tricky fight for this build since you don't stand still a lot. Remember that if you're not standing still, your damage does go to a fraction of what it would normally be. So you want to make sure that you are tanky enough to tank these targets. This is a very important thing. Other than that, the only other thing really left to show you guys is probably the super endgame version. So I made a much more expensive, this is not League Star, this one here, 95 plus single cluster. I always get questions about, you know, people wanting to dump more currency into Righteous Fire. So what you're able to do is actually click this. You'll see the damage goes up a lot, but the gear goes up a lot. And what you're able to do is start to kind of, if you want, pick pieces and plug them into the build. So you could quite literally say, oh, okay, I have enough currency. I can go ahead and aim for an amulet like that and replace your amulet. Or you can replace for a helmet. You could go for the corruption here. So it's not like you have to upgrade in any specific order. I would say the only order you'd have to go on is if you're going for the Annihilations approach, you want to make sure you are max res capped, whether you're doing that with max res jewels or getting max res on a shield. And you also want to go ahead and pair the Annihilations approach with a Rational Doctrine to give yourself the sustain you need so that you are not just running around with like very bad regen. Anyway, that pretty much concludes that. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Before I go, I'm just going to go ahead and pop into one more map on one of my super endgame guys. Unfortunately, we will not be this strong in the patch as Necropolis did nerf us a bit, but that doesn't mean the clear won't be somewhat similar because this is only T16 content, right? So T16 content, you can kind of blast very, very quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and just ID this right here. Yeah, that looks good to me. This this character is by no means league start whatsoever. Furthest you get with the mage blood. But the point I was trying to make is if you really love a build, you can go all the way with it, right? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, if you did, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And you can always catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.